In the coming months, the World of Warcraft will undergo what will no doubt be one of its biggest and the most controversial changes in its so far 15 year history, with this time affecting the perception of leveling. WoW's players are either going to herald its change or loathe what has happened to their beloved game. So today, let's talk about what's going to happen to leveling. This is more or less a discussion video though. I'm not exactly going to critique or hype. I'm not trying to talk you into anything, but I hope that this is worth a listen. So if so, please consider liking the video and subscribe for more content like this or support the channel. According to the Shadowlands announcement and its subsequent interviews, leveling will be split into three phases. Levels one through 10 is the introductory experience, the starting zone. Blizzard is adding a new zone called Exile's Reach that all classes, even Death Knights and Demon Hunters, can goof around in. Exile's Reach is a pretty cool addition that modernizes the intro to WoW as well as funnel players together to bring that sense of how we'll all be funneled into new expansion content later in the game. But keep in mind that it's not a replacement for the original starting experiences that you're familiar with. You can choose the way that you want to start. Levels 10 through 50 are going to be a, they're going to be kind of a trip. Blizzard unofficially is going to call this Chromie time, and here's what happens. Brand new accounts will be shoved immediately into the Battle for Azeroth expansion after level 10, where those players will level from 10 to 50. This appears to be not an option for those kinds of players, but all of us, who happen to have alts, can choose between all of the expansions, including vanilla, and level there exclusively. The intended design is to have us complete the expansion's zone content as if we were playing through the expansion when it was current, as in, you know, we would actually play through most of the zones. Of course, if we felt like it, we can jump back and forth through all the expansions, but during this 10 through 50 experience, the entire world is scaled to your level, no matter where you go. That's going to be important later. Once you hit level 50, Chromie time is over. The legacy expansion zones will then scale down to a certain level. For example, according to Patrick Magruder in a Eurogamer interview, he says that after Chromie time is over, all of Pandaria is going to be scaled down to level 35 or so. This action of reverting the expansions down to a certain level progression is with respect to players who enjoy running previously completed content like old raids for transmog, and prefer to blast through it instead of being forced to group up. In many ways, I think this chromie time thing is pretty cool. Think of players of World of Warcraft Classic who either lost interest or they never played the modern game. Without needing to buy an expansion box, they can start a new character campaign in any of the expansions and get what hopes to be that full leveling experience. That's a pretty sweet deal. And in general, players who might be WoW veterans, well, you might not remember or you might not know what it's like to play through the drama of Storm Peaks or assist the Ethereals in Netherstorm or become the savior of Stoneplow. All because maybe you leveled past the content too quickly and that's not a fault of your own. The last but not least phase is the third leveling block, the 50 through 60 leveling experience that takes us through Shadowlands. In their announcement, the WoW team said that leveling would be upwards of 70% faster than before, at least considering the 1 through 50 experience. This makes reasonable sense considering that we would be only choosing one expansion path to play through, and at the end of it, we would be ready for Shadowlands. That's the what's up, but what else is there to talk about? There are a lot of questions and specifics that we don't know, like, are we sure that Pathfinder will work in Chromie time, or will flying licenses be an account-wide thing going forward? And can Chromie time be turned off whenever I want? Because exactly what's gonna happen to my level 100 character that I use to farm old raids? Under the Chromie time thing, everything's gonna be scaled to the character's current level. I would like to be able to turn Chromie time off so I can do the things that my old characters always did. The WoW team did say that nothing about our current character's routine is going to change, but I really would like some clarification. At first, I was really excited about Chromie time and I had this exhaustive script that went over all the hidden possibilities that Chromie time would bring. 
But that was until I did some actual research and found out about zones being scaled down to certain levels after reaching level 50, after leaving Chromie time. So instead, I'm going to talk about this as a missed opportunity that could have revolutionized the way that we perceive WoW. Maybe it's controversial, maybe it's not. But what opportunity is this? A bona fide mid game. Under the current premise, once we reach level 50, Chromie pops in and turns off Chromie time. The level 1 through 50 zones will be scaled down to levels that are close to the original order, and then we're off to Shadowlands. So let's take a closer look, but keep in mind that I am speculating here. Now, while leveling from 10 through 50 in Chromie time, we're not going to, for example, we're not going to Tanan Jungle and Hellfire Citadel. We're not going to campaign in Suramar or work our way up the vanilla ladder to AQ40 with 40 friends to get those last few levels. What I mean is that Chromie time appears to cover leveling content, but not the later patch content that comes afterwards in each expansion. The stuff that was, at the time, endgame. Because by definition, well, endgame doesn't take place at level 50, it's going to take place at level 60. You know, the new max level in Shadowlands, in freaking Dracula's castle. You know what though? I think that there can and should be a functional endgame at level 50. So what the f am I talking about? I'm going to be talking some design fan fiction at, on top of my speculation, so strap in, okay? Imagine you make a brand new character, you play through this new Exiles Reach experience, and you choose, later on, uh, the Cataclysm Zones. So you level through Cataclysm, levels 10 through 50. You hit 50, eventually, and then Chromie appears like out of nowhere like, Hey, listen! You know, like you're ready to leave Chromie time and get back to adventure, let's go. But then you tell her, No. No thanks. I think I'll stay in Chromie time. Imagine having the choice to continue on to Shadowlands content, or to stay in Chromie time, which will essentially lock your level at 50, and you can't gain any more experience. Of course, locking your level is something that you can do now. Today you can level to level 60, for example, and then lock your, lock your level, your experience, and then progress through vanilla patch content. Then unlock uh, experience again, and repeat the process at level 80, so you can progress through Burning Crusade and the Lich King, and then do it again for at level 100 for Cataclysm and so on and so forth. But what if you can lock yourself in Chromie time, where every expansion before Shadowlands is level 50? This would be a different level of Twink Mode, a playstyle that lives and dies at level 50. Imagine that you can gear up through Lich King dungeons because they're your favorites, and then go to Molten Core and progress through that and smash Ragnaros, and then gear up for Black Rock Foundry for the gear that you need to go to Heroic Firelands or something, and then fight Ragnaros, you know, this time with feet. The idea here is that in Chromie Time, the level 50 version of Endgame, the rules and restrictions are bent. Because for one thing, in Chromie time, since everything is scaled to level 50, naturally item level is scaled too. The gear from Wailing Caverns, for example, and Antorus, it might be scaled to level 50, but Antorus is a final tier raid, and obviously the gear from there is going to be much more powerful. That means a tier 1 boss like Ragnaros would kind of be like the equivalent to Gahoon or Imperator Margok. Let's take it even further though. It means set bonuses can work again, as long as of course the abilities are still around. It means multiple set bonuses from different expansions are compatible. It would mean that you have to re-earn legendaries on your Chromie Time characters, but it also means that these legendaries are relevant no matter what dungeon or raid you go to. The way I see it, because of how special this mode is, it's not something that you should be able to just hop in and out of at will. Once you leave Chromie Time, you're done, you're leaving for good. I think that this would be a cool feature, but we have to consider the obvious. No one's asking for this, so we don't have a clue if there's going to be an audience for it. There is one possible audience to try to tap into though, and that's WoW Classic subscribers, as I mentioned earlier. Based on the Shadowlands announcements that we've heard so far, WoW Classic players will have access to all content from levels 1 through 50 and can run the full leveling experience on their characters. 
So it'll feel awkward if they're automatically taken out of Chromie time only to see that the expansions that they didn't run are just a little more than a low-level ROM. By making Chromie time a permanent thing for classic players and a mode that current WoW players can move on from, this is... Okay, this, this is essentially recycling old content and dressing it up like it's new, but I don't see anything wrong with that. That's enough about Chromie time for now, which still might be a bad idea, but I do think that this is a missed opportunity to let players appreciate older expansion content that, after Shadowlands, we're gonna zip by these without so much as a glance. So let's move on to the future. What's going to happen after the Shadowlands expansion? The WoW team went so far as to make this lovely little template of your humble beginnings, the choose your leveling adventure, and whatever's current, in this case, Shadowlands. It's all nice and clean with fairly simple numbers. But what happens later, in patch 10.0? The simple answer would be to add 10 levels, an increase from level 60 to 70. So you have a 1 through 10 intro, a 20 to 50 chromy time, a 50 to 60 shadowlands, and a 60 to 70, I don't know, thrall opens a noodle cart business expansion or something. And well, that's perfectly possible. Okay, maybe not the Thrall stuff, but the leveling, okay? But it would still be weird, seeing as how the efforts at redoing leveling would later be more like a band-aid than a permanent solution. Although Blizzard is pretty notorious for fixing the problems of today without so much of a strategy for tomorrow. But what if they're wising up this time? What if the WoW team intends to reuse this template? And how would it work? Well... If the template is going to be reused, Shadowlands will undoubtedly be, be lumped into Chromie time. The question then is, what will the level bracket be? Will it still be 10 through 50? Or will it be 10 to 60? Because at least for the moment, we don't quite know what levels will mean in Shadowlands, other than to paste the story content, similar to how WoW Legion and Battle for Azeroth worked out. If Chromie time is going to change from 10 to 50 to 10 to 60, there's either going to be nothing earned from levels 50 to 60, which pretty much reintroduces the original problem Blizzard was trying to solve, or whatever you get while leveling is going to be spread across 50 levels instead of 40. I get that this sounds confusing, talking hypotheticals based on content we haven't seen yet, but looking at it this way feels messy. We also have to consider further down the road, two to three expansions from now, is this template going to hold up? I do have another idea for this template, which is also very messy and difficult to explain, but it's one that at least holds a better job, or I'm sorry, it does a better job of holding up over time. So check this out. Shadowlands is going to be added to Chromie time, but the Chromie time bracket is gonna remain unchanged. Meanwhile, character levels are going to be squished again, bringing players back down to level 50. The new expansion has a max level of level 60 once again, and this cycle repeats every expansion. This already sounds very strange, and to start with, the thought of WoW permanently as a 60 level MMO is really awkward. It's gonna have a very Groundhog Day kind of feel if every two years our level is reset back to 50. Then again, this sort of already happens, thanks to the way combat ratings like crit and haste have to be recalibrated every expansion. Otherwise, secondary stats would inflate. I mean, imagine if in Shadowlands you need three times the crit rating to have the same crit chance that you have now because math? Whatever. I'm just speaking for me, but I don't think I would be affected by a regular level squish. I mean, we're already getting one in Shadowlands for sure, so everything's on the table at this point, you feel me, you know? And as long as the relative feeling of power is still there, if I could still kill a mob within a certain amount of seconds, it doesn't matter what kind of numbers or letters or symbols we end up seeing. But let's go back to our earlier discussion of Chromie time, that whole theory, and consider what can happen to our characters as new expansions roll out. In fact, let's look at what's supposed to happen as we move from BFA to Shadowlands. Our characters are going to be rolled back to level 50, and according to announcements, our stats and overall power should not change. A fresh level 50 character in Shadowlands should have the same base stats as a character that was 120 but was converted after this whole pre-patch thing. So I have a hypothesis. 
For the sake of argument, let's say that after leveling a fresh character in Battle for Azeroth, your item level is 300. By the time you finish leveling in Shadowlands, but before you start really getting into the endgame stuff, your item level is at around 500. This is a pretty safe estimate because by this time, quest gear ought to have replaced most, if not all of your epic raid and dungeon gear. But then for some reason, you forget about this character and it's 500 item level and then you do other things. You make other characters, you quit the game, whatever. But years later, maybe the next expansion, maybe two or three expansions from now, you come back, you hop back onto this character that did no more than level through Shadowlands content. Their item level now, 300. Here's what's happening in this theory. This template isn't just a blueprint that scales character level, but item level as well. When leaving Chromie time, your character will always be at around the 300 item level range, given the items that you collect while questing and while leveling. Leveling to 60 will always get your character to the 500 item level range, again thanks to quest items. And then there's endgame progression that pushes you well past this. But with every expansion release, there's like a mini stat and level squish across the entire game. The scaling can work even with characters that you played throughout an expansion. So using a geared character as an example, once the next expansion rolls around, their item level would be scaled down to 450 or so which is still much higher than the item level 300 that you would get from leveling, but you still end up replacing gear in the next expansion. Blizzard did say in their Shadowlands announcement that there's no intention to have a stat squish. Here's the thing though, under this theory of mine, there won't need to be a stat squish for Shadowlands because Shadowlands is what will complete this entire item level template. The highest item level in Shadowlands is going to theoretically be the highest item level that you'll ever see in WoW. The stat and level squishes will come every expansion afterwards. Mathematically, this is plausible, but there are a few obvious concerns. For one, the perception of power progression would be entirely disrupted. The gear and stat treadmill would be laid bare for all to see, and I'd find that pretty distressing. Going with this also further enforces the notion of so-called expansion features, gimmicks, cool things that are alive in the present, but as soon as Chromie Time kicks in, or as soon as we go to the next expansion, it mostly goes away. Now I told you this was more of a discussion video and not something to get you really excited or hyped about something. The one point that I want to make though is that I was right. A level squish was never going to be as simple as anyone thought. With the foundation that Blizzard built, there are still a lot of unknowns. Maybe we'll find out more in the next week or so, but I'd like to hear from you, listener person. What sorts of hopes and concerns do you have for leveling in the new World of Warcraft? Share it in a comment below, and otherwise we'll see you later. Until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Mm -hmm.